everyone and welcome to Paint with Heart. I'm Cindy Harrison, your host and artist of Paint with Heart in New Hampshire. And my bestie is Mrs. Meliz, Melissa Reyes from LA. Here she is. Hi everybody. I'm Melissa Reyes, Ms. Meliz, and I am here in Southern California. And today our word of the day is challenge. So, um, you know, uh, my card says, do more than is expected. Be the best you can be at this moment. So that's the important thing to remember is that whatever challenges we face, um, which we're always facing, at this very moment, we're going to do the best we can be. And we have really great examples of that right here in our classroom because, you know, we're all going through some crazy things, and, but we show up and we do the best we can in um you know with what we have and uh, always try to put the best face forward and keep moving forward that's the challenge it's not easy but together we can we can face it and do anything so that's the spirit of the um the project we have today i think that we're going to be practicing a technique that um cindy's going to be teaching us tell us about it cindy i shall so yep yeah, the title of this project is we can work it out and when I asked you guys what, what, when you think of the word challenge, what do you think of? And someone came up with the dimensional effects. So it was truly a challenge for me too, because it's been a while since I used this product. But I think that I like the way it came out and we're going to do it again today. I started with a paper mache box and I painted it with, um, first, I should say, first, I sealed it with multi-purpose sealer because paper mache boxes have a tend to start rising or lifting uh, because it is paper so it starts to ripple but I found if I use the sealer first it keeps that to a minimum if if it totally eliminates that rippling effect um, there's a lot of moisture in paint and it will start to buckle then I covered it with two coats, this particular one with desert cactus. Obviously you use a color that would best suit your decor. Um, I just happen to love these colors. And today I'm going to do a box and I painted it with terra coral, another one of my favorite colors. So two, about two coats and it works fine. We also want a bottle of Snow White and our tools to perfect this technique are a um, decorating tip number three and this is a what they call a coupler it's two pieces be careful if you're ordering these on Amazon because they you could get just that and not this piece so you got to make sure you have the the two pieces you need the two pieces and then a decorating bag, disposable decorating bag, and a filbert brush. Filbert brushes work best. I also have handy a piece of paper towel that has been dampened with water. And I think we're ready to go. I'm going to take some of my decorative paste out of the container. Now this I did not tint with white paint and you see how it's kind of yellowy, at least it is for me. It's not giving me a pure white look. So I'm going to take some paste out and I'm going to put it on my palette. And you really don't need a whole lot, but I'm going to start with that. And then I'm going to take my white paint and I'm going to mix some white paint in there with it. Now you can mix, if you want colored flowers and stuff like that, you can mix any kind of paint in here with this and it won't change the color of the paint that you're using. So that's a nice idea. And while I'm doing that, I want to thank everyone for coming and watching. If you're watching on the replay, thank you so much. And please like, share, comment, and click notifications on my channel. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, please. Subscribe. And subscribe. 
<laughs> I knew I'd forget something, but I have my trusty BFF, Melissa, to remind me. Trying to remember everything. You're doing great. You're going a little fast. I also want to thank everybody who's here um, live with us. Um, Donna and Ophelia and uh, Kathy. It's so wonderful to have everybody here um, following along. Yes, and you make the show that much better. I'm going to, if you look at the um, distance of this coupler, I want to cut off probably about an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch off the tip. And then I'm going to put this piece inside. It's like cake decorating, which I used to do. Did you know that, Melissa? I used to decorate cakes. You know, I did that a little bit too, but uh, I believe it. I mean, I'm sure that you did it to the, I don't know, more professional degree than I did. <laughs> <laughs> So you see, I put the tip on here and then I put this on. And be careful that you don't tighten it too much because I already cracked this. So you don't want to tighten it too much where you crack your plastic, but you want to get it on there. So it's not too wiggly wiggly. Right, okay. I'm going to now turn this over. So I just have the inside and I'm going to pick up my paste, push it in. I squeeze here and I pull off. Put some more in and squeeze and pull it off. I don't have a lot, so I'm probably going to have to add more. Because what you want to do is then squeeze this down to the tube. Now in cake decorating, obviously you have a lot of frosting. So you twist this, you fold this over and you twist until the pressure of the twist starts pulling, uh, pushing the frosting out or the, in this case, dimensional effects out through the tube. Can you see that? Kind of right there. So I'm going to put that into the damp paper towel, the tip of it so it doesn't dry. Trace your design onto your surface. I'm going to take my twist it. I'm holding the twist between my forefinger, my index finger and my thumb. And I'm going to um, hold the rest of it in the palm of my hand. And I'm going to use these three fingers in the palm of my hand to squeeze the decorative paste out. Now you can go right to this or if you'd like to, you can practice on a black piece of paper that was put inside of, or a colored piece of paper put inside of a um, sheet protector. And I know this is kind of glossy, but I'm gonna try and do this. So if I drew on the piece of paper, my flower, try to do the um, same pressure. So if I take this out, I can go and and then I can draw some leaves. So I have an idea of my lines and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to try, I'm going to try and do it at right on top. 
and go slow and keep the same amount of pressure as best you can. And touch down and lift off. Practice that over here on my leaf. Try to stay up on top so that you're not flattening the dimensional pace to the surface. Okay, so I'm staying on top as I come around, keeping that, and we found that the number three, I learned this technique from Diane Bunker, and she said the number three gives you a higher rise to your paste than the two that I was using, and that's why this one doesn't have a very high rise. So I'm going to do the leaves first when I get to my box here. I know I'm not on camera. I'm going to do the leaf first on both sides. And watch for a second and then you can go back to your what you're doing. I'm taking my filbert brush, and this is the important part. When you think, <laughs> see how I flattened it out here? That's not good, I don't want that. I want it raised like this one. And then think of an airplane coming in for a landing, and this is the landing field, okay? We want the airplane to come in from outside and land toward the center. So I'm going to draw my moistened paint uh, paintbrush and I'm going to come in for a landing. When I do, it's like this. I come in for a landing. It's a small gradation in for a landing, but I'm going to touch the top of each piece of dimensional paste. So I come in for a landing and drag it down. See? Come in for a landing, drag it down. Come in for a landing, and I'm just tickling the top of the, the paste. Come in for a landing, drag it down. Hard at this angle to do it, <laughs> but I'm getting there. And you can wipe off your excess if you want. Come in for a landing, wipe it down. I have to keep telling myself I'm coming in for a landing. I feel good. <laughs> Talking yourself through it. Do, now, did you, do you have a special set of brushes that you use for that? Or are you using the ones that you regularly paint with? It's the ones I regularly paint with. It's just a, a filbert. This is a number four. Okay. So if that's too much, you can use a smaller brush. If I use it on the flat one, I come in for a landing. I don't have as much rise on that on that one. Come in for a landing, come in for a landing. Now if you get ones where you don't want it, just take your watered down brush and wash it away. If you want to put lines in here for veins, you take your watered brush or you can even use your stylus. I'm gonna take the chisel edge of my brush and I'm going to wipe some off. See? So that's how you can Make some vein lines. So let's go practice some more. I'm going to take this off because I didn't like that one. I'm going to take some of this and put it back. 
in my bag. And when you're done and you don't have a, um, you have a lot of paste in your bag, but you want to uh, save it, go get an airtight container or a film canister and put it in there and you can save it for next time. Um, I'm gonna do the outside leaves first and then I'll move to the inside after. But you go ahead and practice what you need to do. Because it really is just a matter of practicing. Okay, we'll come in for a landing. I'll start up here. I feel like I'm playing golf and when you practice your, um, if you're gonna swing and hit, you practice that you are hitting the ball. <laughs> your swing's where you want it to be before you actually hit the ball. Wipe that off. Mm. We'll wipe it, line up the center. Give myself some center veins. Next, I'm gonna do the um, flower petals. And I'm gonna do one at a time because I don't want the other three to dry while I'm pulling the first one, so. Come in for a land. Now, also, too, remember all of these are going towards the center growth. It grows from the center out. So, we're going to pull all of these towards the center. Shape that one. So if you had more than one decorating uh, tip and bag, you could change the colors out. You could make the put green paint in the dimensional effects for the leaves, and then put a different color in for the the um, flowers. And always put it back into the dampened paper towel. And I hold the brush at like a 45 degree angle. Come in for a landing. Come in for a landing. Works better if the brush is lying down.
you have more than you need, just take it off. And move on to the next one. And if you have to talk to yourself, it's okay. Landing, 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 landing. I'm very impressed. I don't know how to get this so it's not so white and glary, but. It looks okay, it looks fine. It's also tedious, right? It's like, oh, it looks really cool, Cindy. Well, for the first, you know, for the second time in, like a decade, it's not bad. It, this I think will definitely stay raised more, but it is a, it's a work in process um, because I see where I landed too soon in some areas. So that means it gives me like a, a hill and a valley rather than a smooth gradation. So I have to learn to come in softer and not make an indentation in my piping. And once it starts drying though, I suppose we should just let it be, but. How long do you have until it really starts to, to start drying? Well, I think this one's already, one of these is already, like this one I think has already started drying, so. About 15 minutes, you think, or do you keep wetting it? How's it that? I would, it, it, once it, it's like the outside will dry faster than the inside. So it might be dry to the touch on the top, but you don't want to smush into it because then it will, um, you know, smush out and that's not good. So I usually would leave it overnight so that it would have enough time to harden on the inside of the, of the pipe. I meant like while you're working with it, if it starts drying, like how, like, do you have to, you, if you put that on, you kind of have to work fast to make sure it doesn't start drying on you, right? Well, it's not going to go that fast. It says, oh. uh, it says that it let dry for four to 12 hours, depending on the thickness. So that's, it's not going to dry that fast, but how long have I, how long has it been since I did the first one, you know? Um, Cindy? Yeah, it's still wet. Uh, do you wet your brush when you're um, in water to smooth this out? I, I do clean the brush off periodically. After a few pulls, I'll go clean off the excess and, okay. and keep the brush moist. Okay. And I think that helps it better to land. Okay. So I definitely, yeah, I do, I do go into the water. Yeah, okay. it's still pliable, so... It's not drying that fast. So it needs to reshape that one. And with the dampened brush, you can reshape, uh, reshape your petals, which is nice. And also too, if you don't like it, just wipe it all off and start over, which is, you know, I mean, we're only human, right? And, and nothing's perfect, but if you really, really, really don't like what you've done, wipe it off. Now I also did, 
I also did these curls. And the trick is go slow. I did these curls in the decorative paste. But I want to show you an alternative. If you don't have a steady hand that can manage these long curls and you don't want to do it with paint. You want to add dimension, but you want to I found some things in the scrapbook section and they're, they're um, scrolls made out of pearls and these are pink. So they could work on my pink box, but it's pink on pink then, right? Get some of this stuff off my hand. Um, I also found these bling. So I thought it would be nice if I took some of them and placed them on my box. And think of them as, you know, little parts, not the whole thing. You don't need the whole thing. You just need some of it. So even if you just did this round one, if we put it coming out of here, it kind of looks neat, you know? You can just use one section of them. You don't have to use the whole thing. I made the flower quite big. This one, if you notice, is, sm is way smaller. So that's how I was able to get the scrolls on the left and the right. So I could put the one of these there. The other thing I can do is just take it and put it around the side, as long as you leave room for the top to come down. So that's another way of doing it so you don't have to paint or, or do the scrolls on top. You can make them dimensional with some of this diamond stuff. I did take the individual, um, gems here and I put them on my box. With that, I also add some tacky glue because you want it to stay adhered. I don't think the um, adhesive on these is strong enough to keep them on there forever. So I always hit a dot of tacky glue and then put this on after. I chose to use the gems with that, but this one here, I was looking at some pearls and, and maybe um, using pearls on this box. And then I found um, this ribbon that has stuff hanging from it, beads. I love this stuff. And I thought, wouldn't that be cool if when this is dry, I glued that to around here and then let that hang down over the edge of the box. I think that's going to be really cool. And if it hangs too low for the box, I'm going to put some feet or a pedestal on that box to raise it. If I did that, then I probably wouldn't put anything on the top. I'll probably just use white paint. Or we could do little droplets with our paste. So if I did that, I can go, see if I can get this going here, droplet, push and release, push and release. Let's do some over here. Push and release, push and release, push and release. So like little teardrops. So we can do that here. We can make dots here. 
and let those stand up. And then when that's all dry, I will glue this on with using that tacky glue. This is one of those things you just have to practice, practice. Yes. Practice. And um, you yeah. can also, if you get a different tip and you get the tip that has a leaf, you can get like four tips in a package and you have a leaf tip, you can put that on there and do your leaves with the leaf tip, like in decorative, uh, like in, oh, cake decorating. So you, all the same uh, techniques or, or position, you know, moves that a cake decorator does, you can do with this dimensional effects using the different tips. It's just a matter of, um, you know, it's not edible. <laughs> Well, number one is too small. Number one will be too small to get things through. And I yeah. was using this one, the original one, I used a number two tip. And I noticed I didn't have a lot of rise. And that's when I called Diane and Diane said, use the number three. So I had a higher rise and I'll see what happens after it dries. Okay. But I'm hoping that it stays higher because it's thicker and then i also because it's thicker have more product to pull does that make sense i yeah. have more product to slide right so um yeah and you can mix paints uh different colors with this yes okay and it won't change the the consistency the, you know because sometimes if you mix this with white it makes it a lighter value Okay. I don't think that this mixed with white will make it, um, this mixed with the dimensional effects will make it lighter. Okay. I can do a little test and see. Let's test. So if I put a little bit of this over here. Yeah, because even though the paste looks white. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, oh, that looks pretty nice. Even though the paste looks white, it's actually a clear paste. And that keeps the, it keeps the color. Oh, that looks nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It didn't change the color. Oh. So isn't that cool? Yeah. So if you have, you know, either multiple couplers and bags right or you're willing to just work it with one color at a time and wash the <coughs> tools out <coughs> sorry then you can do dimensional and color right isn't that exciting yeah you can get different ideas i found this in my stash if you don't like this and this gets too difficult to do and you want something that's easier and quicker, I found this <laughs> lace. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a, um, yeah, it's just lace. An applique. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we just decoupage that right on here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but to finish this off, besides, I'm, besides, I'm going to put this, or you can put the lace and glue it on there with your tacky glue. The, the other thing I did on this one is I found a napkin. Oh, nice. That yeah, matched it. Good. And yeah. so, so I, on the back, you, you know how you have to pull the napkins apart, right? Yeah. So here's the napkin and I'm going to take, I guess I'm using my pen. I'm cut this out. And I need to I need to paint the inside white because anything that is white or any napkins are very thin. So what's gonna happen is what's gonna happen is is that when you put the napkin on there, it's going to take 
the color behind it and that's going to come through. So you don't want anything to come through that you want the napkin to be the only thing that you see. So that's why the inside of this has to be painted white. I would leave the top of the cover, the, the outside color. I wouldn't put anything up in the cover, just the bottom part here. Okay, so now I'm going to take some data polish. Show this up a little bit. And it's kind of runny, and I would normally put it in a cup, but I don't have a cup, so I'm just going to put some right here. So I'm going to smush it into the corner. And then up the side. And I can play with this with the um, paintbrush and it will not tear. Whereas if I use the multi purpose sealer, I would definitely be tearing it. Okay, so now that is in there. Now I get to go over to my napkin and measure first off how far this is going to go around. So definitely it's long enough to go around. And then I have to also measure how deep it needs to be. So I'm going to go. I think it's about an inch. Fold this in half. And then this is a trick that I, it's like I just keep folding it in half until it's so this way here I'll go straight across rather than going wibble wobbles. Yes, it's a new word I just made up. Okay, now we need to take You know I was gonna ask you about legal wobbles. <laughs> <laughs> they fall down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Some napkins are two ply, some are three ply. So you have to uh, notice that this is still has another ply there. I need to separate it from. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to take my box and some of these have a seam so you want to start probably where that seam is and to make your life a little easier roll this up on itself so when you start putting it in and I'm going to do the cut edge, not my cut, but the original edge of the napkin down and my cut edge up. And I'm going to pick up some decoupage and put it in a little area. And put that whole thing in there. And then keep it rolled up, go to the next area section, and then place that down. Make sure you get all the way to the top. Okay. 
you can't play with this too much because it will it will tear As it gets closer to this edge, I'm going to cut some off. So while it's wet, you can pull that off or you can wait till it dries and use the sanding paper or see um emery board file nail file so there you have it um hmm. anything else i can share with you today those are beautiful cindy yeah very nice. Again, she makes it look so easy, huh? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> it's not, it's, you know. And she doesn't get anything on her hands. Oh, I do. I have stuff on my hands. <laughs> oh, very little. <laughs> very little. Okay. So I, I'm going to let Melissa have the spotlight. Ooh, it's time to go already. I guess it is. It's time to say goodbye. What a wonderful little project. You make it look so easy, Cindy. And um, but like every challenge, it takes time and practice and the ability and willingness to keep at it until you get it just right. So you set a wonderful example and thank you for sharing it with us and showing us all the different ways to make it unique and beautiful. Thank you. It was fun. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you again for joining us ladies today. Thank you for joining us on YouTube. Remember, um, share the videos with your friends, comment below, um, whether you liked it or not, it's okay. Just comment, you know, what you've done using the dimensional effects or Margot's mud. Um, also like the page or like, like the uh, YouTube channel and subscribe. And if you also want to, you can join our Facebook group, Paint With Heart on Facebook. And that's where I will be posting every week the supply list, the palette and prep work as, long, as well as the line drawing. And you can find that it's in the group. Now I'm not doing events anymore. I'm just putting them into the group, Facebook slash Paint With Heart. And it's in under file. If you look on the side, it'll be under file. And um, hopefully you'll get notification that, you, that it's there. I also will still list it on cindyharrisonart.com at slash paint hyphen with hyphen heart. There is uh, tiles there with each project on it. So other than that, Thank you all for joining me. Thank you, Melissa, my bestie, for helping me produce this show every week. And if, if you ladies aren't aware, her husband is the one who wrote the music for the intro and the credits. So thank you to Lito as well. And did you have something to say? I was just saying thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so until next week, remember to always paint with heart. <laughs> 